Namaste. Good afternoon to all our viewers. This is Dr. Aparna. I am your emotional healing synergist. I am an Ayurvedic psychotherapist, a passionate infopreneur, medical writer, and a budding YouTuber. So, uh, on my pursuit to address, promote, and propagate Ayurveda and psychotherapy globally, I come up with discussions on different aspects of Ayurveda, mental health, and psychotherapy every week. So, uh, today's topic of discussion is uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. As you can see in my background, P T S D. Uh, I had got requests from many of our clients and our uh, subscribers and viewers that uh, I have to do a um, you know, uh, session on what is uh, trauma-related stress. So this is the actual word for that, post-traumatic stress disorder. We are going to know everything about what is post-traumatic stress disorder and, uh, you know, how it uh, how does it impact the mind and the body what are the causes what is the incidence and what are the symptoms and how do we manage we'll see how much of it we can cover to cover today and if uh, it is not uh, covered completely we'll take up another session on post traumatic stress disorder so without wasting time I'm going to start. See, post-traumatic stress disorder, as the name itself indicates, that this is because of, this stress is because of a trauma. Now, the, uh, uh, the definition goes like this. See, post-traumatic stress disorder is a mental health condition that is triggered by a terrifying event. That means something bad happening. See, either experiencing something terrifying or witnessing something terrifying. That means symptoms may include flashbacks, nightmares, severe anxiety, as well as uncontrollable thoughts about the event. So, post-traumatic stress disorder is a mental health problem you may develop after experiencing traumatic events. See, the condition was first recognized in war veterans. This came into existence after it was, you know, uh, seen in war veterans. It was called by different terms in the past. We'll not go into that. But so what exactly is it? So, so the post-traumatic stress disorder is a disorder that develops in some people who have experienced a shocking scary or dangerous event that means it is uh, see we all experience some scary or, or dangerous events in our lifetime it is natural to feel afraid during the during and after traumatic situation but fear is a part of our flight or fly, uh, you know fight or flight response i have talked about the fight or flight response earlier in my videos so this fight or flight response helps us you know avoid or respond to potential danger it helps in both either we can avoid or either we can respond to the potential danger that is common but here in post-traumatic stress disorder here you know um, it is different See, people may experience a range of reactions after trauma. And most people recover from the initial, you know, symptoms <clears throat> over time. Those who continue to experience problems may be diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. See, uh, after the traumatic incident, we all tend to forget and recover over a period of time. So even after a period of time, even after a month or so, if the symptoms continue, if there is unnecessary fear, anxiety or stress regarding the event that triggers the event, the flashbacks of the event trigger that triggers that individual, then that is PTSD. 
otherwise it is normal it is natural to have a response to a trauma so who gets ptsd now so who 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 what all persons you know in what all conditions we can see ptsd see any one can develop a uh, ptsd that is post traumatic stress disorder it can it may be developed in any age this includes you know combat war veterans as well and you know they see a uh, bombing they see terror first uh, when it started it started like this they used to experience terrifying horrible events or they lose some of their colleagues you know some of their coworkers this disease uh, you know this disorder developed like this and see people who have experienced or witnessed a physical or sexual assault people who in uh, you know experience assault abuse maybe a physical accident or people who experience disorder or serious health events you know people who have ptsd feel stressed or frightened even when there is no danger see this is unreal the event has already happened yeah either they are victim of that event or either they are uh, they have witnessed the event so and one more thing is not everyone with the stress disorder the traumatic stress disorder that is post traumatic stress disorder has you know been through a a uh, dangerous event not everyone goes through a dangerous event they may have witnessed something wrong and sometimes learning that a friend or family member experienced trauma can cause ptsd see according to the Na- national center for ptsd there is a center for post traumatic stress disorder you know uh, it is in us so uh, you know uh, that also uh, you know says that every 6 out of 100 people you know experience ptsd that means 6 you know 6% of the people who have stress are stressed because of the post traumatic stress disorder either either it may be a physical or sexual assault either it may be a abuse either it may be a accident either it may be, either they have seen a disaster a uh, disaster or uh, a hazard or a uh, loss of loved ones because of all these reasons so see um and it is said that women are more likely to develop ptsd than men slightly greater ratio though men also can develop ptsd women tend to develop more a bit of the ratio is more so um certain aspects of the traumatic events and some biological factors such as genes you know genes also <coughs> that is genetic material uh, genes may also you know make some people uh, um, you know mo- to develop ptsd so what are the signs and symptoms of ptsd here so what uh, a person experiencing you know uh, post traumatic stress disorder what all signs and symptoms he might experience so symptoms of ptsd usually begin within 3 months of the traumatic event so symptoms usually begin within 3 months of the traumatic event either the terrifying event they may be the victim or witnessing both but they sometimes emerge later even uh, even after 6 to 7 months of the event the ptsd may develop so to meet the criteria for ptsd a person must have symptoms for longer than 1 month and the symptoms you know last for a longer duration more than a month whenever he has he or she experiences symptoms the symptoms are last for longer than 1 month the fear the stress the anxiety lasts for more than a month and the symptoms must be severe enough to interfere with aspects of daily life 
what it does why any abnormality it is called an abnormality because it impacts your daily functioning it interferes in your you know daily aspects of life your productivity your work life your personal life your relationships or your you know uh, professional relationships everything gets affected that's that is the cause of worry in any mental health disorder not only in ptsd so the symptoms also must be unrelated to you know medication substance use or other illness uh, see it is not that uh, it um, to completely it might be uh, you know the reason might not be something physical or something related to medication or something related to all alcohol and tobacco this uh, type of stress is not developed might not develop due to all these reasons the reasons may be simply a trauma or a hazard you know or uh, any uh, witnessing any danger or you know going through a loss of a family or a friend so the course of the disorder varies here see some people recover here the recovery also depends on the individual if it depends on the strength of the mind in ayurveda we call sattva bala how strong is the person and how willing is he or she to recover that also depends it varies people might recover very fast some people might not recover very fast it may takes years for them to recover and still they may be on therapies and medications so usually people recover within 6 months while others have symptoms that last for a year or longer as i said see um people with post traumatic stress disorder often have co occurring conditions such as depression substance use or more anxiety issues see here uh, i said that i i have contradicted my statements what did i say that means both can happen i said that it the substance use alcohol or the medication or you know it might not be a cause for uh, this post traumatic stress disorder but when you have post traumatic disorder it may be a you know don't get confused a comorbidity such as they might have comorbidity such as depression also they might also have substance abuse because of that depression because of the stress as a coping mechanism they might use drugs they might use all alcohol they might use tobacco for you know coping with that stress or depression so one or more you know anxiety uh, disorders they it they might be having one or more disorders though these might not be the direct cause but these might be co occurring co existent that is the that is what the point is and after a dangerous event it is natural to have some symptoms so for example some people may feel detached from the experience as though they are observing things rather than experiencing them see here symptoms might vary people some people might feel they are ex- still experiencing that horror they are still experiencing the terrific event when there is a physical abuse or uh, sexual abuse uh, after over a period of time also they might feel that they are experiencing that horror once again and people some people might feel uh, for, uh, that they are not experiencing it but they are visualizing it some people may visualize have the sensation of visualizing it some people may have the sensation of experiencing it so uh, you know a mental health professional who has experience in helping the, you know uh, if you have if you see a family member or your friend or yourself you are experiencing any of these symptoms you have gone through any childhood trauma or an adult a trauma you have to approach a mental health professional so uh, you can approach a psychotherapist or a psychiatrist see they can help you diagnose and see some uh, sometimes what happens is ptsd is not even diagnosed 
people are having stress people are anxi- uh, feeling anxious and having the symptoms but the p- uh, post traumatic stress disorder is not even diagnosed so how do we diagnose symptoms so at least one re experiencing symptom the symptom should be re occurring that means you have to you have to have the same flashbacks same vivid you know visualization whatever it is there it should be you know re experiencing or at least one avoidance uh, symptom see avoidance symptom is avoidance here is if uh, you know if there is if something wrong has happened in a social gathering let's presume that person he or she will avoid that social gathering that is called avoidance symptoms or anything has happened in the workplace that person will not be willing or avoid to go to workplace or public events so that is called avoidance symptom and at least to um, you know uh, cognition and mood symptoms there are also cognition and mood symptoms where we will talk about all the symptoms uh in a minute but we will uh, usually all the if all the symptoms are there depending on that a mental health professional will diagnose it as this you know post traumatic stress disorder see uh here um you know re experiencing symptoms i talked about re experiencing symptoms see experiencing flashbacks flashbacks is relieving the traumatic event including you know physical symptoms such as racing it may be uh, you know associated with uh, racing you know increase in the heartbeat or sweating whenever you uh, you know have the flashback or the visualization of that event whenever that person experiences that event it might be associated with some physical symptoms as well that is increased heartbeat palpitation sweating all these might happen or trembling sometimes it is different for different individual it is not the same for everybody because the kind of trauma also is different so having recurring memories and dreams related to the event and while sleeping as well they'll dream because that is going on in their head they dream of the same event and they have recurring memories of the event they are not able to forget that event and move on having distressing thoughts that this event might happen further one more once more this might not this pain might be completely unrealistic but still they will feel that they uh, that this con- this uh, thing will happen once again so experiencing physical signs of stress see sometimes stress and post traumatic stress disorder can be very tricky because the symptoms of the stress also will be seen here in some cases diagnosing may be tricky so thoughts and feelings can trigger these symptoms as words objects and situations that are reminders for the of the event so see uh, what are the avoidance symptoms so i talked about avoidance avoidance means avoiding something avoiding a public gathering avoiding an event avoiding to meet a friend or a family member avoiding to go to work avoidance is that so staying away from the places from the events or staying away from the objects that are the reminders of the traumatic experience so some place might remind them of that traumatic you know incident some event might remind them so avoiding thoughts or feelings related to the tra- traumatic event to you know cope up with their trauma what they do is they avoid thoughts or feelings related to the traumatic event so what happens is these avoidance symptoms may cause people to change their routines what mainly happens is majorly happens is they change their routines for example some people may avoid driving and you know or riding a car because they have experienced uh, an accident while they are driving a car or a vehicle maybe they avoid driving because of that accident and uh, because they have experienced an accident they completely avoid driving that i am not worthy enough of driving this might happen 
and there are other symptoms called arousal and reactivity symptoms so being easily startled irritable they, they are very irritable easily irritable they feel tense on uh, and feel always on the edge you know and ha they have as i said they have cognition symptoms as well you know they have difficulty concentrating have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep sleep is disturbed in every you know mental health disorder sleep disturbance is a common symptom feeling irritable and having angry or aggressive outbursts because they remember their trauma is recurring the flashbacks of the trauma are recurring they have angry and uh, aggressive outbursts and engaging in you know uh, you know because of these to cope up with that engaging in reckless or destructive behavior destructive behavior can be you know uh, in behavior or you know uh adapting such uh, adopting a hobby like you know smoking drinking drug abuse all those things so and cognition symptoms see um cognition and mood symptoms here is having trouble remembering key features of the traumatic event see they remember the some parts of the incident really well but the key features to describe the event they have trouble remembering that they have negative thoughts about themselves and the world they might have suicidal thoughts as well and they might have thoughts like i am not worthy enough of survival or having exaggerated feelings of blame directed towards oneself or others they might blame themselves for the incident and or they might blame some others for the incident this may be completely unrealistic so having ongoing negative emotions such as fear anger guilt or shame so they always have either fear either anger either guilt or either shame and they lose interest in all the enjoyable activities earlier what all activities or hobbies they used to enjoy they lose interest in everything having feelings of social isolation as i said avoidance they they always feel like being isolated so having difficulty feeling positive emotions such as happiness or satisfaction see as i said this uh, ptsd is a mental health condition that arises in response to experiencing or witnessing a traumatic event so this event is often is often one that involves the threat of death serious injury or sexual violence we see many cases of you know women developing the, a uh, ptsd after the physical violence or the sexual violence so people with ptsd that is post traumatic stress disorder may experience a range of symptoms that persist long you know after the traumatic event has occurred so including intrusive thoughts intrusive thoughts is uh, inside the mind they have negative thoughts maybe that i am not worthy they may self blame they have suicidal thoughts people have different people experience different intrusive thoughts flashbacks nightmares you know uh, avoidance behaviors negative changes in the mood and thinking and heightened arousal responses see these symptoms can significantly impact a person's daily functioning and quality of life the main thing which is impacted is the quality of life the holistic wellness is impacted here see what all are the causes of the uh, you know ptsd as i said traumatic event see the traumatic event may be anything like uh, exposure to a traumatic event such as combat natural disasters like you know earthquake a volcano or maybe like that that as well so and accidents assaults abuse violence these are the primary triggers for ptsd that is post traumatic stress disorder see the intensity and the nature of the event play an play a role in determining its potential cause see what is the intensity how much is it impacting the person's life
what all symptoms he's he or she is experiencing all these the intensity of the you know uh, disorder uh, also is important while you know determining the potential cause and it may be personal factors also may contribute to ptsd what are individuals with a history of mental health disorder that means i said they, they have uh, pre you know a mental health disorder and they might have experienced some previous traumatic experiences in the childhood or they have a family history of mental health issues those people are more susceptible to develop you know post traumatic stress disorder coping mechanisms see people with limited coping skills or inadequate social support networks might struggle to process and recover from a traumatic event increasing their risk of developing a post traumatic stress disorder they have some other mental health condition and they have you know limited coping skills or uh, their sattva bala as i said is low then also it will give rise to a uh, post traumatic stress disorder there are some neurobiological factors that means certain brain areas certain areas in the brain involved in stress response and emotional regulation may function differently in individuals with ptsd potentially contributing to the disorders development and genetic genetic factors may influence an individual susceptibility uh, you know susceptibility to ptsd affecting how they respond to stress and trauma so social and environmental factors so positive social support and a strong community uh, community can act as protective factors so the first thing what we do in any mental health disorder is we say that you know grow a social support network that means people who you can trust your close family members your close friends or close colleagues who you can trust and uh, the people who have the same once you go to psychotherapy you will have support groups that means people who are suffering with same mental health disorder as you or as the person um will have will get to uh, you know meet and share their experiences with the similar um, uh, you know similar mental health disorders so what happens is they can share their experiences they can share their uh, you know treatment journeys and how did they recover all you know makes them strong so it it will give a uh, help them to recover from this is in general for every mental health disorder <clears throat> see incidents uh, i already talked about incidents that women are it, uh, generally it may be developed in any age but uh, women are more prone to develop than men usually 6 to 7% of the population or experiencing stress have stress because of the post traumatic stress disorder so um this is and uh, the here are the signs and symptoms i will discuss in detail we have uh, you know discussed about the symptoms in brief so in detail intrusive symptoms i have talked about intrusion symptoms so what is intrusion symptoms is these involve relieving the traumatic event they may be they may include distressive memories so as i said as we all whenever we experience trauma some uh, it is natural to feel afraid of it it is natural to be distressed of it but these people cannot take they don't forget and move on so they always have distressing memories even after months of the incident have passed so they will have flashbacks they will have nightmares they will have intense psychological and physiological reactions as i said they will have physical symptoms as well they will uh, and they will they are always triggered by the reminders of the trauma they always get the reminders of the trauma time to time they experience all all of these 
and i said the avoidance symptoms we talked about the avoidance symptoms because individuals with ptsd often try to avoid anything that reminds them of the traumatic event so negative changes in the cognition and mood see people with ptsd might experience changes in their thoughts and feelings so they can include persistent negative beliefs about themselves or the world distorted feelings of guilt or blame feelings of detachment from others difficulty experiencing positive emotions and a diminished interest in previously enjoyed activities all these we have discussed so then changes in the uh, you know diagnosis how do we diagnose is one is we do clinical interview of the patients when we uh, do the consultations and we have dsm that the diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders there is a manual called the diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders so we now it is dsm 5 uh, you know that from that as well we uh, you know um, diagnose ptsd and duration of the symptoms the symptoms persisting uh, a month or more than a month functional impairment all these criteria we see you know and we rule out other symptoms other conditions because it might be confusing sometimes to get to the diagnosis and severity is also there mild moderate and severe or oh, everyone will not experience severe symptoms there may be mild symptoms there may be moderate symptoms and there may be severe symptoms according to it uh, uh, treatment is prescribed now we will see what are the effects on the mind you know cognitive and emotional what happens when a person has ptsd how, how does it affects his or her mind as i said intrusive thoughts and flashbacks so um they will have the thoughts memories and uh, the images of the traumatic events they visualize them all and they have hyper arousal that means uh people with ptsd often have heightened sensitivity to their environment that is leading to constant vigilance and exaggerated startled response you know um they are always uh, if you just uh, they they can be easily irritable easily aroused easily they get angry or easily they might uh, get aggressive as well and avoidance as i said avoidance this also affects the mind negative thoughts and beliefs emotional dysregulation all these leads to what happens is there is dysregulation emotion emotions are not in control so there is no emotional regulation what happens is people with ptsd might experience intense mood swings irritability anger outbursts or difficulty managing their emotions so what are the effects on the body all these are the effects on the mind so what are the effects on the body are there any physical symptoms so ptsd can cause a variety of physical symptoms including you know headaches stomach aches uh, chest pain you know muscle tension the these symptoms can arise due to body's you know heightened stress response there may be headaches symptoms like headaches you know abdominal pain chest pain muscle tension sweating increased sweating increased a uh, heart rate and uh, they might experience palpitations as well and as i said if in every mental health disorder one common thing is there is a sleep disturbance there is a appetite disturbance and there is a sleep disturbance sleep problems are common uh, you know insomnia nightmares and night sweats because um, the thoughts are running continuously in their mind the sleep is disturbed and hyper vigilance hyper vigilance is really important that means individual may be constantly on the lookout for potential threats matlab har waqt unko ye rehta yahi rehta hai man mein matlab zehen mein ki kuch na kuch abhi galat hone wala hai wo hyper ho jate hai hyper vigilance bolte hai usko matlab agar kisi ne door bajaya to unko lagta hai ki are door baja ke to hame maarne aane wale hai ye event fir se repeat ho sakta hai 
you know uh, it may what it does is the hyper vigilance make makes it difficult to relax and concentrate this state of hyper vigilance can lead to exhaustion and difficulty focusing on tasks what happens is the hyper vigilance often leads to exhaustion matlab jaldi thak jate hai wo and it it makes it difficult to focusing focus on tasks so and um, you know all, uh, these are the symptoms and what happens is as i said to for coping from the stress the from the stress that is occurring due to that trauma what they use is they they uh, fall uh, you know tra- uh, they will be trapped into the substance use or alcohol consumption or tobacco and self destructive behaviors some individuals may turn to alcohol drugs self destructive behaviors like suicidal tendencies or self harm or harming others whatever it, uh, you know it is different for different individuals so it has a you know a significant impact on mind and body and the overall well being is affected when a person experienced experiences you know a post traumatic stress disorder so it is very important to seek professional help at this part of time because the quality of life is being compromised here so now i will talk about some types and forms of ptsd so that you can know that okay this is ptsd that means this is due to stress the, uh, the stress is due to the trauma so combat related ptsd as i all already told that ptsd came into existence because of the combat war veterans so a soldier who you know served in a war zone witnesses the death of a fellow soldier and experiences constant threat leading to intrusive memories hyper vigilance and nightmare even after returning home so and you know sexual assault related ptsd this is also very common a survivor of a sexual assault struggles with fear anxiety depression a uh, constant feeling of threat the, the person also becomes hyper vigilant due to recurring memories of that assault it may be a physical assault as well in childhood as well somebody is constantly beating the the beating that person you know that person is experiencing physical violence she over she or he avoids that situation that reminds her of that trauma and has difficulty trusting others the trust issue becomes very much difficult and as i said natural disaster related ptsd see some someone who survives you know uh, a hurricane and loses loses their home and experiences distressing flashbacks there may be a volcano there may be hurricane there may be a earthquake what happens is this uh, they cannot forget that incident they lose their home or they lose their loved one and they always experience the distressing flashbacks anxiety whenever they hear thunderstorms as they associate them with the traumatic event childhood related trauma this is very common in childhood there may they may have they might have experienced some you know uh, assault some type of assault or abuse and it is not affected affected them when they are children it is affecting them when they are adult so an adult who experienced physical abuse as a child struggles with low self esteem shame and emotional dysregulation so what they develop avoidance behaviors that means they avoid certain social situations due to fear of rejection or fear of threat whatever medical trauma related ptsd this we have not talked about that means a patient who underwent a life threatening surgery um a uh, complex surgery for ca- cancer or something what happens is experiences nightmares and panic attacks triggered by hospital settings it is triggered by just uh, you know when he travels he if he sees hospital that that surgery triggers him Uh, or uh, if he sees a doctor or nurse in the family when he is all right that also triggers uh, med- that trauma 
of going through the surgery so leading to avoidance of medical care next time he has some physical suffering he has some physical problem he will not approach the hospital or he will not take any medical care so that is the avoidance nature next you know a uh, first responder related ptsd so this is something uh, new that means a uh, for example a firefighter if there is a firefighter who witnesses traumatic accidents and dis disasters develops symptoms of ptsd he is not the victim but he has uh, you know witnessed it the first responder is a witness he is not a direct victim but he has uh, you know um, witnessed traumatic events or the bad happening to people there so that person might develop ptsd he it, he might develop irritability he might develop emotional numbness and it is it becomes for him you know he avoids uh, certain uh, events or he avoids going to work and it is difficult it uh, interferes into his daily life it becomes difficult for him to maintain him or her to maintain relationships next is accident related ptsd we have already already talked about it that means if a, there is a for example there is a survival of a car crash who experiences distressing memories and nightmares about the accident so they feel on the edge and avoid driving or being in vehicles next time what they do is they cannot uh, drive a vehicle if they have experienced and this might be uh, they might self be a victim or they might have witnessed something witnessed a car accident that also might happen you know they just might have witnessed something it has not happened directly to them then also they might Uh, you know develop accident related uh, post traumatic stress disorder then this is witness related ptsd that is this is the same as i talk as we talked about that the, if if a person is a witness to a violent crime or a uh, violent hazard then what happens is this person if a man lete hai ki kisi a person has seen a murder you know a witness to a murder a horrendous murder so that person experiences intr intrusive thoughts and heightened anxiety so they avoid the area where the crime occurred so they will uh, avoid you know going alone or they might avoid that place they might avoid that city you know altogether or um, you know going alone and next is terrorism terrorism related ptsd that means a survivor of a terrorist attack we recently had a client who was a survivor of a, a terrorist attack experiences you know intense fear and panic attacks whenever they you know en uh, encounter large crowds whenever they see large crowds public transportation or busy urban areas they always experience you know um a uh, terror uh, attack they always feel that they become hyper vigilant and they feel that something wrong is going to happen even it might be completely unrealistic so all these are the types and forms of ptsd that means how how differently a uh, ptsd uh, can you know uh, develop so if you ask me what is the treatment the treatment is the therapy here main treatment is the therapy the talk therapy the cognitive behavioral therapy the treatment is also you know elaborate it takes time so we'll discuss the treatment section of it in in the next session so uh, you know uh, because it it will uh, take time so for in brief i can say that psychotherapy mainly the psychotherapy part you know mainly the a uh, psychotherapy plays uh, an important uh, role in the treatment of uh, treatment uh, here in the uh, post traumatic stress disorder so um, what happens is a uh, cognitive behavioral therapy there are sessions which uh, you know group therapies all these therapies uh, or combined therapies all these therapies are uh, you know administered and there are so many cognitive exercises exposure therapy all these are done and cognitive restructuring all these are done in the treatment we will discuss the treatment with case studies in the next session so thank you for staying tuned and uh, i'll be back in the next session and meanwhile 
if you have any topics for me to address please uh you know share it in the comment section and share your thoughts if you have any in the comment section so that i get to know that how is the content and uh, how are you uh, liking it what more do you want me to do so uh, thank you and uh, namaste for today i'll be back in the next session